welcome dear students we are on the cec gurukul lecture we are in the series of electronic circuits in today's lecture we discuss the one of the basic electronic gadget which which is most commonly used in the electronic circuit is the transistor so today's topic is on the transistors first what is the transistors and what uh, in this lecture we discuss uh, what is the transistor and uh, oh, types of transistors and how many biases biasing we can do in the transistors so first we understand what is a transistor as we know the transistor is a three terminal electronic device made of the semiconductor material any transistor which is having a, which is developed from the semiconductor material and having the three terminals and that electronic device is used in the electronic circuit and this three terminal electronic device have three terminal by the name of the base emitter and collector what is the basic function of the transistor it converts the input small amplitude to the magnified output signal means the input signal or the small amplitude is applied at the base to get the magnified output signal at the collector there are the three component of this electronic device which is having a base emitter and collector emitter which generates the um, uh, generates the electron and that collector will collect that so input signal of the small amplitude is applied at the base to get the magnified output signal at the collector what is the transistor basically transistor is the three terminal device which is made of the semiconductor material and three terminal by the name of the base emitter and the collector why we use a transistor we use a transistor just to get the amplified signal and it is used for the switching also it is used for the voltage regulation and modulation of the signals on the screen you are seeing that here are the basic transistor which are used in the electronic circuits now what is a transistor these devices are made up of the semiconductor material which is commonly used for the amplification or the or the switching purpose and it is also used for controlling the flow of voltage and the current in the circuit it is also used for amplifying the input signal into the extend output signal if we are giving a weak signal to the transistor then we can get the amplified signal or the modified signal as a output from the transistor so basic function of the transistor just to amplify the signal and it is made of the semiconductor materials and it is you commonly used for the amplification or the switching purposes transistor is usually a solid state electronic devices which is made of the semiconductor material the electronic current circulation can be altered by the addition of the electron in the transistor basically in the transistor we are having a pn junction where we are having a holes and electrons which decide the movement of the current and that's why here we are saying the electronic current circulation can be altered by the addition of the electron the process brings the voltage variation to affect the proportionally many vibrations in the output current and that bringing amplification into the existence there is a variation of the current and the output current will be magnified not all but most of the electronic devices contain one or more types of the transistors some of the transistors plays individually or else generally in the integrated circuit which vary according to their state of application what is the brief history behind this transistor the radio generated in 1895 by marconi that was invented by the marconi in the 1895 but the problem just to take the radio signal to up to the long distances so because signal is very weak so there is a challenge to increase or to amplify the signal so forest improves uh, there is a scientist there was a scientist forest who improves and fleming's original vacuum tube to amplify the signal but uh, and that is a third electrode but this tube was so uh, bulky for most of the application we cannot uh, put this bulky tube into the system 
so the generation of the transistor there then the in the bell lab bardeen and his group explain in 1947 the device which is made originally from the germanium the current transistors made of doped silicon and right hand side you are seeing that this is the transistors which is which is invented in the bell labs and uh, on the bottom we are seeing a diagram this is a transistor which is made up of of the of the doped silicon that is a semiconductor so how the transistor work transistors work when we do doping in it then we can get the p type and n type semiconductors there so doping means adding small amount of other element to create the additional protons and electrons in the system if it is a p type then dopant like a fourth valence electron that must be the boron and aluminum we will use for the doping for the n type dopant have the additional fifth valence electron that is the phosphorus and arsenic so what is the importance current flow from p to n from from positive terminal to negative or the p type semiconductor to the n type semiconductor Previously, we discussed about the diode and its biasing. Oh, diode cannot work as a transistor because it is a two-terminal devices. Diode, which is a simple p-n junction, and it is having a forward and reverse bias, allow current to flow from p to n, and in reverse, no current allows to flow from n to p. There is there we just studied about the breakdown voltage where we have a sufficient N to P voltage of a zener diode will allow for the current to flow in this direction. Means we are having a diode two terminal devices having the forward biasing and reverse biasing. Now in the transistor we are having a three terminals. So transistor consists of three layers of the semiconductor, which has the ability to hold the current. then it will be amplified the electricity conducting material such as silicon and germanium has ability to carry the electricity between the conductors and insulator which were enclosed by the plastic wire and in this manner we are having a transistor semiconductor materials are treated by some chemical process which is called the doping of the semiconductor means we are having a n type and p type material by doping it If the silicon is uh, doped with the arsenic, phos arsenic, phosphorus, or antimony, then it is obtaining some extra charge carriers. That is the electrons. Then it is a n-type or the ne negative semiconductor. Whereas, whereas if we put the boron, gallium, arsenide, it will obtain a fewer charge carriers. That is the holes, and are called it as a p-type or a positive semiconductor. that we already know about it now transistor there is, on the screen we are having a transistor that is a bipolar transistor bipolar means which is having a two polar junctions you see on the there is a two polar junctions means here we are having emitter base junction that is written on the bottom eb and right hand side we are having the collector base junction that is e that is cb in between we are seeing that n type and the both n type is at the outside of the p type It means p type is sandwiched between the two n type semiconductors and uh, n type on the left hand side is a emitted emitter and it is a emitter region in between there is a p type that is a base region and on the right hand side we are having the collector region that is a n type also and that is the collector terminal and at the bottom we are having a base terminal so the term bipolar refers to the use of the both the holes and electrons as a charge carrier that's why it is called a bipolar junction where we are using a holes and electrons bipolar charges in the transistor structure and uh, there are other two types of the bjt means uh, by polar junctions are of two type as we are using the pnn so it is Uh, like that p n p n where p is sandwiched between the two n type and p n p where the n is sandwiched between the two p type semiconductors and in this manner we are having two types of bjt how does transistor work the working concept of the main part of the understand how we use the transistor or how it works there we having the three terminals one is the base 
second is the emitter and third is the collector base it gives base to the transistor electrode emitter charge carriers emitted by this and collector as the name suggest charge carriers collected by this so base which gives the base to the transistor emitter which get the which emitted the charge carriers and collector which collects the charge carrier on the screen we are having the bipolar transistor a transistor is basically silicon and germanium crystal containing the three separate region on the screen we are having the representation of the, the symbol of the transistor you are seeing that bjt is made of the silicon crystal or germanium crystal in which the thin layer of the n type for the n type is sandwiched between the two p type and vice versa we are having the on the uh, the upper diagram having the emitter and base base is the n type and collector is the p type the upper one is the n uh, p and p transistor and you see the symbol b is the base e emitter and c is the collector now uh, on the uh, lower diagram we are having a npn diagram the uh, transistor so it is the p type is sandwiched in between the two semiconductors so in the symbol is like this uh, collector and emitter emitter which emits the electron collector which collects the electron now type of the transistor based upon how they are used in the circuit there are two types of the transistor basically one is the bipolar junction transistor the three terminal of the bjt are the base emitter and collector a very small current flowing between the base and the emitter can control a large flow of the current between the collector and emitter terminal the three terminals are where we are having three terminals are connected to each other so if there is a small current flow between the base and an emitter then it can be controlled by the collector and emitter terminal now what do we need transistors uh, if we are having a fm receiver which grabs the signal what we are giving it to the uh, the received signal will obviously will be the very big due to the disturbances it would face during this journey then the output will be the disturbance so we require the amplification of that signal now if this signal is read as it is it cannot get the fair output the output which we require so there is a need to amplify the signal so amplification means increasing the signal strength and transistor works in this direction it amplify the signal now why do we need a transistor this is just an instance amplification is needed wherever the signal strength has to be increased when we require to increase the signal strength then we use the transistor this is done by the transistor a transistor also acts the switch to choose between the available options and it is also regulates the incoming signal and the out out voltage of the signal it will give the regulation between the current and output to control the movement of the current at voltage in the circuit so what is the constructional detail of the uh, transistor as we say that we are having the pnp and npn transistor this transistor is a three terminal solid state devices which is formed connecting the two diodes back to back we know that p one diode and second is the pn junction just we attach the two pn junction hence it has got the two pn junction in the diode we are having a single pn junction but here we are having the two pn junction and which is connect the three terminals are drawn out of the three semiconductor material present in it three semiconductor in this manner that the one is sandwiched between the two others like n is sandwiched between the two p type and one p is sandwiched between the two n type which means an n type material between the 2p type and a p type material between the 2n type respectively now three terminal drawn from the transistor indicate emitter base control and collector terminals and they have the they have their functionality as we discuss one by one first is the emitter on the as we see just i wish we will see first the this is the this is the transistor now you see on the left hand side we are having a emitter that is represented by the one and the center one is the base that is represented by the two and in the third which is the collector this is the basic symbol 
and uh, the upper diagram shows the shows the uh, transistor which we use in the laboratories for the experiment purpose also so this is the uh, transistor which is having a three terminal 1 2 3 one is the emitter second is the base and third is the collector you see this is a symbol you are saying that uh, we are having a arrow down to the emitter and b represent the base c represent the collector and E represent the emitter. So, we discuss one by one what is the first is the emitter. The left hand side of the uh, structure is the emitter and uh, this has a moderate size and heavily doped and its main function is to supply the number of majority carriers to the system either the electrons or holes it depends upon the p type or n type and in this the uh, emits electron it is called the emitter and this is simply represented by the capital letter e second is the base the middle material in the above figure is the base this is the thin and lightly doped as compared to the emitter and the main function is to pass the majority carriers from the emitter to the collector it works as a mediator just to pass the pass the carriers charge carriers from the emitter to the collector and this is represented by the capital letter b Next is the collector. The right side material uh, in the figure we are having that is the collector. The name implies as a function which is collecting the charge carrier which is coming from the emitter through the base. This is a bit larger in the size than the emitter and the base and uh, it is moderately doped. Uh, uh, the emitter is heavily doped but this is the moderately doped and this is indicated by the C. Again this is the diagram what we are having this is the this type of the uh, transistors we use in the laboratories and this is the symbol of the transistor here with, which is containing the three terminal base collector and emitter. Now, there are the many types of the transistor we, we use. Each transistor is spe, uh, specialized in its application where we use this transistor. The main classification of the transistor is as follows transistor BJT and FET field emission transistor and one is the BJT bipolar junction transistor. Again the bipolar junction divided into two. PNP and NPN and FET divided into J JFET and the MOSFET. On the basis of the application, we use this transistor in the, into the electronic circuits. So, uh, in detail, we will discuss first the bipolar junction transistor. What is this bipolar junction transistor and how it works? The bipolar junction transistor is named as a BJT and it is having a 2 BN junction attached back to back. This BJT is nothing but the normal transistor which we use in the uh, daily circuit. Now, this BJT it has got two type of the configuration one is NPN and second is, is the PNP. NPN where the P is sandwiched between the two N type terminals, N type semiconductors and PNP where the N is sandwiched between the two P type semiconductors. Uh, usually PNP transistor is preferred for the sake of the convenience. NPN transistor where we are in the, uh, the holes in between uh, holes is sandwiched between the two electron uh, semiconductors means uh, N type uh, P P semi type semiconductor sandwich between the two N type semiconductor and these, these are the images of the uh, both the transistor like NPN transistor and PNP transistor. NPN transistor we are seeing that uh, the three terminals are there base collector and emitter. We are seeing that the arrow is downwards in case of the NPN. NPN transistor, but in case of the PNP, the arrow is upward towards the base, but it is outside the arrow is uh, arrow is towards the emitter side, but in the PNP, the arrow is towards the base side. So we have to just we represent the transistor in this manner. So, these are the symbol of the transistor. The arrowhead in the figure indicates the emitter of the transistor as the collector of the transistor has to dissipate much greater power it is made larger. 
So, due to the specific function of the emitter and the collector, they are not interchangeable. So, the terminal are also the kept in mind while using the transistor. So, we have to be very careful to define the terminal. Now, transistor biasing. As we know the transistor is combination of the two diodes, we have the three terminals and we have the two junctions like PN junctions as one junction is in between the emitter and base. This is called the emitter base junction and likewise other junction is the collector base junction. So, in the transistor we are having a two junction one is the emitter base junction and second is the collector base junction next is the collector base junction now the first we discuss what is the biasing in the transistor biasing which controlling the operation of the circuit by providing the power supply in the biasing we control the operation of the circuit by biasing it may be forward biasing it may be the reverse biasing the function of the both the pn junction is controlled by providing the bias to the circuit through some of the dc supply and now we are having the biasing you see in this transistor biasing you see pnp and npn here we are having the ebc emitter base collector and the positive terminal is connected with the emitter but here on the right hand side we are seeing in NPN the positive negative terminal connected with the N type. So, both are having the different biasing P to P connect here and here we are having to N to N connect. So, this type of biasing we can done on the basis and we can control the signal in the circuit. Now, it is understand that the N type material is provided negative supply and P type material is given the positive supply to make the circuit forward bias. If we are making the forward biasing, then N type provide the negative supply and the P type uh, provides the positive type respectively. But in case of the reverse, the N type material provide the positive supply and the P type material given the negative supply just to make the reverse biasing. So, transistor also having the forward biasing and reverse biasing on the basis of the connection where the N material provides the uh, N positive supply to the positive then it is a forward when N provided the positive and the P provide the negative then it is a reverse biasing. By applying the power the emitter base junction is always the forward bias as the emitter resistance is very small. So, the collector base junction is reverse biased and its resistance is a bit higher. A small forward bias is sufficient at the emitter junction whereas the high reverse bias has to apply to the collector junction. As we applying the power the emitter base junction is always a forward bias because its emitter resistance is very small that is why it is a forward biasing. The collector base junction is a reverse biasing as its resistance is a bit higher. So, a small forward bias is sufficient at the emitter junction whereas the higher reverse bias has the applied to the collector base junction. The direction of the current indicate indicated in the circuit above also called the conventional current. The direction of the current in the circuit that is represented by the conventional current and is the it is the movement of the whole current which is opposite to the electron current that is the operational. Now, what is the operation of the PNP transistor? On the right hand side, we are having the diagram which is representing the operation of the PNP. N is sandwiched between the two P. N terminal and on the right hand side, we are having a positive uh, semiconductor which is having the majority of the holes and N we are in between these two. You see in the diagram, the right hand side collector is bit larger in size as compared to the emitter and the base and it is connected with the battery, positive terminal connected with the positive, it means we are having a forward biasing here and you see that uh, uh, positive is connected with the uh, po positive. This, the, the operation of the PNP transistor can be explained by having a uh, look at the following figure in which the emitter base junction is forward bias and the collector base junction is the reverse bias. On the right hand, left hand side you are seeing the emitter is connected with the positive terminal but on the right hand side you see that the collector is 
connected with the negative terminal terminal so this is the operation of the pnp junction the voltage voltage uh, ee provides a positive terminal to the emitter which repels the holes in the p type material and these holes cross the emitter base junction to reach the base junction we will discuss it in the further lecture thank you very much